Well, look at that. I got everything going. Oh, can you see the kitty cats over here in the corner? I have crazy cats today. It's pouring rain outside, so they can't go out. So they are um, helping me. <laughs> if you hear thundering noises, it's likely just my cats. They're crazy. So I have my coffee. Do you have yours? Uh, oh, Tay Tay's decided it's nap time. Bobo's like, no, 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 it's not nap time. <laughs> Just answering a text here. All right, so I have been working with, hold on, this Cotswold Fleece. Hey, Sadie, good morning, or guess it's afternoon or evening for you. Oh, you can go do what you need to do. Don't have to just visit with me, although I love having you here. <laughs> So I'm just taking this Cotswold and I am just picking it open. Afternoon over there. Okay. Yeah. It's about 10 o'clock here. Oh, sorry. 913. So I'm just picking open my Cotswold fleece here and I'm just giving it one pass through the drum carter and turning it on all into bats. A hot minute, Crystal. Well, thank you. I appreciate even a hot minute. You can see this later because it'll be up and you can see the Cotswold fleece. Oh, see, it's the first one you've made? Oh, well, then by all means, stick around. It's not going to be that exciting. <laughs> Here, let me just tip this down a bit since I'm working mostly in my lap. You can see Latte over here. There. I figured out where my finger is. Oh, my nails are dirty. That's because I'm dealing with a dirty fleece. So this one had been washed, but then it still had um, lanolin in it. So I washed it again. But we still have dirty tips, which is not a problem. It's going to come out in the picking. And I'm just kind of opening it up so that it can go through the drum carter and turn it into bats, at which point I may take some of it and turn it into roving on my hackle and dye some of it up. Cotswold takes dye gorgeous. It has a really nice sheen to it when it's spun. So once you dye it, it gets a really nice color depth to it. Ugh. Can you hear Bobo in the background? He's crazy today. I think Latte has the right idea. Just chill out. And it's like pouring rain. I had to go out and rescue the catio because all the water was pooling on the roof. It's just a tarp over uh, metal fencing and it was going like this. Well, I'm a ways away from dying it yet, Sadie. It's a six pound fleece. Six pounds. And I still have probably four pounds left to do. <laughs> it's a nice fleece, but oh man, this is going to be a lot of work. But I just want to get it picked and carded and then it can go into storage for whatever I want to do with it. But yeah, six pounds is a lot to process by hand. But I actually, I find it so soothing to just sit and pick and play with the fleece. We could even try spinning some of it if people want to see that. Yeah, Sadie. <laughs> I hear you on that, Sadie. I've got a lot to do too, but I want to get this one done. And then I will take the next one and do it. It's not going to be today because it's pouring freaking rain and it will never dry. But I will have to get another one washed. 
and uh, get it drying and then just keep working my way through. That's what I do, Sadie. I watch YouTube while I'm prepping. <laughs> I actually just started re-watching Downton Abbey. I don't know why, but it's, I, I love um, Anna. Anna's my, my favorite. I think Mary is just a, I don't really like Mary. Don't tell anybody, but anyways, <laughs> it's nice because it doesn't require a whole lot of brain power. I can just slap it on and zone out while I'm picking my fleece. Bobo, you crazy cat, come say hi. Latte's just busy sleeping. He doesn't have that crazy kitten energy. So, a lot of times what I do with this, because I'm going to card it, is I just pick out the tips. And I leave it all kind of attached. And just kind of pick it out into a big cloud. Yes, Latte does know where it's at. A rainy day is perfect for napping. Bobo just thinks every day is let's go crazy time. He is over a year old, but he still has that crazy kitten energy. Good morning, Carol. Yes, we have got tons of rain. I also like to listen to books. Oh, I have so many audiobooks. <laughs> I have a subscription to um, Scribd. It's S-C-R-B-D, I think it is. And you pay so much a month, and then there's a limit on the new releases on how many you can listen to a month. But they have so many titles you can just listen to, like, all month long. And it's, I think, $11, $12 a month. But for the amount I listen to, it's worth it to me. Because you try to buy audiobooks, and they're like, 20 some odd dollars for a book it's ridiculous so this is how I often do it as I just kind of pick out the tips and then I'll throw that through the drum carter just makes it a little bit quicker and easier this is such a clean fleece though like it's crazy basically what's coming out is like small debris and a little bit of dirt so do they have a lot of free titles on Audible, Sadie? Because I, I went in once and I just wasn't impressed with the selection, which is how I ended up with Scribed. But I also have um, Chirp, where you can buy audiobooks on sale from like two bucks up to seven bucks. And those are your titles to keep. So I bought a few of those too, because I just downsized my physical book library. I had so many books. So I got rid of a ton of them and I'm just replacing them with audiobooks so I can listen to them because I just I don't read read anymore. I just listen to audiobooks. Good morning, Kenna. Lots of blogs and stuff like that. Oh, well, I should probably check it out again then. Although I am happy with Scribed. It certainly keeps me happy. And then I have, of course, all my podcasts. I am such a podcast addict. I should make a list of my favorites for you guys. Um, I go from creepy to uh, fiction to like all kinds of stuff. I just love podcasts. So see, just did that. All I do is I just pick until my one bag is full and I card that up and then I start again. Because I have six pounds to get through. Six pounds! This was a big sheep. <laughs> it's crazy size. Oh, Baba went outside. Oh, yeah, I love podcasts. When, um, when Tom, my husband, was sick, Obviously, I had a hard time sleeping because I was his primary caregiver and I was always worried if I was sleeping at night, something would happen and I'd miss it because he wasn't comfortable sleeping beside me. He had his own bed. And anyways, I started listening to podcasts to give my brain something to focus on. So it would uh, I could focus on the podcast and it would quiet my brain and then I could sleep for a little bit. I found this one podcast. It's a fiction podcast called King Falls A.M., 
and it was so good. I was such a fan and it just, I ended up becoming friends with the cast members, <laughs> online friends, but nonetheless. Oh no, Crystal, be safe in traffic. See you later. Yeah, so King Falls AM, yeah. I ended up uh they were they were tremendous to me through the whole thing. It was awesome. Um they sent me uh t-shirts and a poster and stickers and everything free because they knew what I was going through. And when Tom died, they sent me flowers. Like these guys are in the States. They've never actually met me other than online. And they sent me flowers and a gift card to go out for dinner and they check on me. And Kyle called me to talk to me after Tom passed away. Like these were just people I met on the internet who did a podcast and they just, they're so special to me and they shall always remain that way because they really did help me out. It's such a tough time. So if you see me ramble on about King Falls AM, not only is it a good story, good podcast, but they were, they're great guys. Um, unfortunately the pandemic <clears throat> has cost a lot of friendships and there's been a few there that in the King Falls AM thing, there's, there was some stuff that happened and uh, they will never actually finish the story, but I try not to focus on the negative and just remember how sweet they were to me at a time when I needed them. So yeah. And it's a good story. Even if it doesn't have a true ending, it's still a good story. Yeah, they they were they were very very sweet to me. There were so many times that I would just uh, reach out on Twitter and you know just to look for support, and they'd be right there. The whole thing. There is um, Trent Shumway, Noah James, uh, Kyle Brown, of course, um, Eric Kimmelton. And even uh, their musician friend who did all their soundtracks and audio, uh, Cameron Chambers, and he helped out too. Like, they were just amazing. Just really, really sweet people. I guess I'm thinking about all that because of the time of year too. So, yeah. Um, uh, what is today anyways? Anyways. I'm waiting on a bunch of deliveries. Shipping has become such a nightmare. I'm telling you, it can take weeks and weeks and weeks to get things that I've ordered. Um, I have something coming from Napa Valley Fibers that's been, I think we're going on two weeks since I ordered it and it's still not here. It's not their fault. I mean, it's totally not their fault. It's just uh, shipping. September 22nd. Wow. The month is just flying by. <sighs> well, I've been busy working outside, getting the stairs rebuilt for the catio so the guys would have access during the winter. I put in a winter door because I can't just leave the window open and have them freeze me out when it's minus 30 Celsius, which is minus 30 Fahrenheit as well. <laughs> yeah, Kenna, shipping is so terrible right now. I mean, they just... I don't know what's going on because they were doing better at the beginning of the pandemic when everybody switched to online ordering because they couldn't leave their houses. They were doing so much better then than they are now. But yes, yeah, so I've been doing outside work, trying to get that done before winter sets in, which of course means I haven't been doing as much fleecy stuff. Three to five weeks from the UK for Canada Post, huh? They were doing all right, like, for a long time. And then now it's like everything, everything has just ground to a halt. And it's taking weeks and weeks and weeks. So I have a new uh, Fiber of the Month subscription coming. 
should be here. They said end of day today, so I'll probably get it tomorrow. I mean, I am remote. Um, I'm in a rural area, but I'm only two hours from Ottawa, which is like a major shipping hub. It shouldn't take that long to get something to Ottawa and from Ottawa to me. From Tenny since July. Oh my goodness. Wow. And I was worried about taking two weeks out of the States. <laughs> and it's not like it's being held up at customs. Okay. I understand about customs and that's not a problem. I get it. We need to make sure people aren't shipping stuff that's illegal or drugs or whatever. Um, but yeah, this is just shipping delays, like shipping. I can check the tracking and it's cleared customs and then it's just nothing. <laughs> To Vancouver, it took a week. Well, Vancouver is a fairly major shipping center because they send all the stuff from the States up through Vancouver and then from Vancouver disperse it across the country. But when it's a country the size of Canada, that's a long ways to go. I mean, you can drive for two days and not make it out of Ontario. Um, it's just, it's crazy huge. People have no idea the scope of Canada, but you can literally drive for two days and not make it out of Ontario, one province. It's crazy. But they're usually better than they are now. So, yeah. So I have a order coming from Napa Valley Fiber. Because they had a sale and I've always wanted to try their stuff. So, yeah, I think England, the whole country, actually, <laughs> Great Britain, <laughs> is is like the size of Toronto. John, my order for John Urban UK got to Toronto in four, but it was another four weeks to get to Alberta. Yeah. Yep. I hear you. So anyways, I will have a bunch of unboxings coming when they get here. And Sadie also did me up a surprise thing and I can't wait to get it because it's going to be a total surprise. <laughs> It's going to be fun. I can't wait. But while I'm waiting for new stuff, of course, I'm uh, just doing this stuff. Yeah, Sadie, I'm so excited. I can't wait to get it. I love a mystery. I just love a mystery box. Like, surprise, here's what's in it. <laughs> It is exciting when they show up, Kenna. I just, but my problem is, is then like I run to the post office and I get my parcel and I run home and like, maybe I'm not like camera ready. Some days I'm quite sweaty because I've been working outside and it's like, I don't care. I want to open it now. So I've got to film it. <laughs> so that's how you get me in all my natural glory. <laughs> not like I'm a makeup wearer anyways, but yeah. Um, what other things have I got coming up? Oh, my bestie wanted to learn how to dye yarn. So we've done that. Um, we just have to film the wrap up video. I have so much filmed and I should be, I should be editing right now, but I hate editing. Honestly, it just, if I shoot like an hour's worth of footage, it's going to take me at least two hours to edit that minimum, often longer, but I mean, I, I do enjoy making videos. I shouldn't say I hate it. It's just my least favorite part of the process because I like to be doing, not just sitting at my computer. But I will get to editing. Um, I think I have five or six videos I need to edit up. I'll get those going and then get them posted. I kind of tried to film a bunch ahead in case I had a bit of a crash so that I would at least have content for you guys to pop up. Um, but then I didn't get anything up to for today, so <laughs> I thought I would uh, do a live. I just chuck it all up. <laughs> I hear you, Sadie. Sometimes I want to do that. But mostly I'm editing for time because if I just posted everything I filmed, it would be hours long. I'm going to have to check out John Arbin. Where is John Arbin? I've never heard of it. Well, Carol, apparently I have time for that. I am going to have to eventually 
get an income because I'm running through my money now. But fortunately, my husband left me in a position where I was able to um, outright purchase my house. And I have been able to take the time to recover from the experience. But it has been, this will be three years since he's been gone um, at the end of October. That'll be three years. Um, I am feeling much more healed. Um, I mean, in the year following his death, there's no way I could have held down a job. I was a mess. And I've still had my moments in the last couple of years. But yeah, pretty soon I have to uh, start looking at, you know, generating some income. (sighs) I don't want to go back to work. I guess I could just work on selling my fiber stuff more. I'm not much of a salesperson. I need a manager. (laughs) North Yorkshire, UK. Wow. I'm going to have to check it out. We have a Pickering in Ontario. (laughs) It's so hilarious to me how many place names are the same between the like the UK and uh and Canada because I mean technically we are part of the UK the queen is our queen All right, I got a bag full, so I guess I better get this carded. Oh, I got fiber bits everywhere. (laughs) Yeah, everything, I guess, came from Great Britain. (laughs) Oh, look, more fiber on the floor. All right, I have my little drum carter here. I do like my motorized drum carter, but as I've said before, I stay up where the sunshine is for as long as I can because winter is so long in Canada. So, just turn you guys a bit so you can see what I'm doing. You can get a better view of latte napping. That's his throne, I call it. Yes, I do things just for my cats. Pretty much my whole house is designed to be cat friendly because they are my babies. My constant companions. And seeing as how everything got locked down and I live alone, it's been really nice to have uh, cats to keep me company, if nothing else. There. So now that I have my faba picked, let's see if we can get you a little better view here. I'm trying not to make you guys seasick. There. Don't mind the mess in behind. The Amazon box is there with the papers in it because guess what? My cat's like playing in it. We stole it all from places in Europe. (laughs) Well, then we stole it from you. So, you know, what goes around comes around. When uh, in the days following the funeral, uh, I was obsessively watching TV because I wasn't sleeping or eating or doing anything else. And I started watching uh, Shetland on Netflix. And I was just like, that's my home. I want to go there. I almost moved to Shetland Islands just because it was like, it just called to my soul. But in the end, I realized, let's be sane, stay in Canada. (laughs) But yeah, the Shetland Isles are beautiful, remote, but very, very beautiful. And just, it just called to my heart. Maybe someday I'll go there. No, who am I kidding? I'm not going to fly. 
Oh, it's so sad. I actually have family in Scotland. And um, I haven't gone over to see them because I won't fly. It's not that I'm afraid of flying. It's that I'm afraid of being trapped in the plane for that many hours. My social anxiety would kick in and I would just... I would be a mess. Like I always have to be able to walk away when I'm maxed out. I need to just walk away and you can't walk away on a plane. I could get on a ship that would take a long time to cross though, because a lot of them now, um, there's not a whole lot of, uh, commercial or passenger ships that just do passengers, but yeah, and I considered it. I did at one point actually have an entire plan made for catching a ship to get to England, at which point I would catch a train to get north. <laughs> I literally, I looked at real estate on the Shetland Islands. Like I literally had it all planned and I was moving to the Shetland Islands. That was it. I was going. I was a little crazy at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had it all planned and uh, I, I didn't do it, which is probably a good thing because that probably would have led to disaster. But regardless, I did have the whole thing. Yeah, planes are pretty confining. My bestie said we could take a flight somewhere and she would just keep me medicated the whole trip. <laughs> but my anxiety is so bad that um, even taking medications <laughs> can make me anxious. I am medicated for it, and it, it does, under normal circumstances, it keeps me very level. But <laughs> oh, at the top of Scotland. Hubby wouldn't let you buy it? Oh, he's no fun. I would love to have an island, my own island. Wait a minute, I do have my own island. It's my house. It's so funny, my uh, female friends who have um, <clears throat> significant other problems, they call this place the Oasis because it's husband-free. <laughs> yeah, my meditation, Carol, is actually um, listening to podcasts or audiobooks. Um that's how I focus my mind and calm it. Sorry, noisy part. Let's see how we're doing. Yeah, we still got room for more. Oh, there's no problems with getting a boat to get to the mainland. Hi, Bridget. Welcome. Got your coffee? Excellent. Trying to type with puppy on my hand. I think my hubby suggested the same island. <laughs> We're all buying Scottish islands and moving off grid. <laughs> um, my brother and sister-in-law, uh, they have a farm out way off the beaten path. I call it their hippie commune because they're pre prepping for the end of the world over there. <laughs> I adore them and they may not be wrong, but what they want is to just live off grid and uh, they're doing a pretty good job of it. Um, if the world gets any crazier, um, I'm invited because I have my post-apocalyptic life skill of working with fleece and fiber and stuff so I can keep making cloth for everybody. Oops. But yeah, they're, uh, they're building their off-grid lifestyle and it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's nice to just uh, go out and see them. Yeah, Nova Scotia is supposed to be uh, really, holy, was that ever Canadian? Eh? Oh, Nova Scotia there, bud. <laughs> Sometimes my accent gets really heavy. 
um, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick are supposed to be like the cheapest places to live. And I went to Prince Edward Island. We drove to Prince Edward Island once. And, you know, it's so beautiful out there. And the people are so, I mean, Canadians are known for being, you know, friendly, polite, whatever. Nothing compared to the Maritimes people. They are ridiculously friendly. Yeah. <laughs> you love my accent, Sadie? Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, when I drink, my accent, it gets ticker and ticker, eh? And then pretty soon... I sound just like a Bush Canadian. Oh, it gets ridiculous. It gets ridiculous. But for the most part, I try to keep my, my English pretty decent. <laughs> Where I grew up, um, it's, it's a very interesting area. We have the, uh, yeah, hard winters in there. Yep, there, yeah. Um, where I grew up, we're right near... A nuclear plant well nuclear research facility um winnipeg winter peg i've heard of winter peg oh my goodness look at the mess of my table that's my drop everything on there don't look at it um yes so i grew up near a nuclear facility uh research facility so a lot of brainiacs and originally the town was gated and only certain people were allowed to live in the town. And this carried through for years and years and years. I grew up outside the town. Therefore, I was not a townie. If you were not a townie, you were a bushy. And that was a bad thing to be. Well, not for me. I was a bushy and proud of it. And now look at that. I live in town. <laughs> Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. No, it was a, it's been a very classist society. I mean, it's not it's not that big a deal. It's just if your parents didn't work at the plant, then you were nothing. So high school sucked, but you know, I survived it, got through, got my graduation degree and said, that's it. I'm out of here left for a couple of years and then I came back again I went you know what I know what I'm doing here I'm just going to stay here and then I met Tom and I wasn't going anywhere Bridget you're in Illinois oh not caterpillars no no not caterpillars I'm hoping you're call talking about caterpillars the heavy equipment not caterpillars the little climbing critters that just you know hatch and hatch and hatch and hatch cats don't like water no they don't except for bobo see when i'm in the tub bobo sits on the edge of the tub and plays in the water and i'm scared he's gonna fall in one of these times and scratch me up pick and play yes Okay, how is it said? And Vita? Hi, how are you? I hope I probably said that wrong, but I, I tried. <laughs> Carol, you started in Kent, England, but born in Windsor, Ontario. That's cool. That's very cool. My mom's parents literally came over on the boat during the war uh, from Scotland, literally on the boat. Uh, I never knew my grandpa. He died uh, when I was only a year old. So I don't remember him. But my Scottish granny was my hero. Oh my goodness. Of course, the problem there is because I was around my Scottish granny so much is um, if I'm around Scottish people, I tend to start picking up the accent. And I think they think I'm mocking them. And I'm not. It's just that my ear is tuned to it from a young age. Um, she died when I was, I want to say 19, but you know, the damage was done by then. And I just pick up a Scottish accent, like nobody's business. Oh, good. And Vita, I'm very happy. <laughs> oh, you've got a drought, Bridget. You want some of our rain? Actually it stopped raining now, but 
Bobble must be outside, but it's uh, it rained hard for a long time. Yeah, I love the Scottish accent too, Sadie. I could just sit and listen to it all the time. And I mean, they have their regional dialects and everything else. Like, I mean, we have Canadian accents and everything. But um, I was, when I was waitressing in North Bay at a truck stop. Yeah, I was a truck stop waitress. Go figure. Um, this gentleman came in and he was exactly where my granny was from. Like the accent was perfect and it was only a couple of years since my granny had died so I hadn't heard the accent in a while and I just stared at him so lovingly and he's just kind of looking at me like oh okay what's up with you chick <laughs> it was kind of hilarious <laughs> I kind of like all Scottish accents but again like I was trained at a young age to uh to have an ear for that oh so I have this big bin here. This is how much I've carted up already. Smoosh, smoosh. I haven't waited to see how far I'm going, but you know, it's a ways to work for six pounds. I will just keep going. Keep Breton. Oh, they have an excellent accent, Kenna. Yeah, it's funny how your ear gets trained for, or your brain, I guess, gets trained for an accent and you can just, you hear it again and there's like, it just, your brain kind of clicks and you can just hear it perfectly and do it perfectly. All right. Oh, I don't want to smack into the tray. So when I'm done this fleece, I am going to have to completely pull this drum carter apart because I have got bits of fleece wrapped around the shaft like crazy because I haven't exactly been very uh, careful with this. Part of my family came from Northumberland. We have a Northumberland Strait, funny enough. <laughs> and further up into Scotland around Glasgow. Nice. Kenna, you sponsored a lamb? And you got to name them? I sponsored a sheep. Um, let me see if I can find his picture because he's really cool. Um, that would be under screen caps. Okay, so his name is Dill, and he's a three-year-old weather. Um, and he has a bit of a limp because he was injured young. Um, and his uh, typical characteristics, so what they normally produce, his fleece weight is usually nine pounds with a medium lanolin level and a strand strength of strong. Now, when I did this, um, I mean, it's a Lisa fleece, so it can, uh, you're taking the risk that the sheep could become sick or whatever, but I paid the money and I leased the fleece and he is coated and this, whoops, this, let's see if it'll show up. There, that's Dill. Isn't he cute? Look at that fleece on him. He's crazy. And that was from the Gainer Homestead. I don't know if they have any fleeces left. I'm just going to have a quick look. So next shearing season, his fleece will be mine. Sergeant Pepper, that's a great name. They were going for song titles with names in them, and he's a big boy. <laughs> See you later, Carol. Stay safe. Yes, Bridget, definitely in hard times, look for the good. 
Yeah, he is cute. Um, let's see. Do they still have? Um, yeah, you, you can actually go and visit the firm too. So I might do that at some point. Uh, I'm just trying to find out. Uh, I've been following them for a while and when they had the lease of lease come up, I was like, woohoo. Uh, just 60 plus acres near Dorchester in beautiful southwestern Ontario. We grow small harvests of many things with a focus on premium, wholesome, and fresh. Our sheep, chickens, pigs, bees, and plants all work together to support each other in a classic agricultural approach approach sometimes referred to as permaculture and it's run by a family and it is Rambule. so that's what my boy dill is is a Rambule sheep and we know how i love Rambule. i love meeting people at fiber festivals Briscoe, BC, what kind of sheep does she have? Yes, yeah, Sadie, I'm so excited. And we're talking like his average fleece is nine pounds. If I get a nine pound Rambouillet fleece from Dill, I'm going to be so excited. And I love weather fleeces. They have no energy that goes into any kind of breeding drive. So that kind of hormone flux is taken off the fiber. They don't carry lambs, so that stress is taken off the fiber. Like, weather is, like, my favorite fleece to buy because they are generally the longest, the heaviest, the strongest, the best, um, because all they do is eat and make wool. And it's just, to me, they're just amazing fleeces. I bought fleece from Sergeant Pepper's mom. <laughs> oh, good luck washing it. I'd love to see how it turns out. All right, I'm supposed to be working. Latte's still sound asleep. I've never known a cat who can sleep like him. Uh oh, I'm going to sneeze. One second. Oh, excuse me. It's probably uh, the hay dust coming up from this fleece. Not that there's a lot of it. I mean, this is such a clean fleece. You've watched me pick it open. How much veggie matter have I picked out of that? Not a whole lot. There is some fine veggie matter, and that's going to be in the bats. But, yeah. Thank you, Sadie. <laughs> I can't watch somebody sneeze without saying bless you either. Ugh. There we go. Please. Please. And I'm not being real gentle with my carter right now. I'm just making rough bats. They're getting one pass. It's just mostly for um, ease of storage. So then when I go to use it, it's already picked. It's had one carding. So if I want to card it some more, I can. Or I can then take it and load it onto my hackle and turn it into roving. It just, I like to have it stored in a semi-usable state. Normally with Cotswold, I would just um, preserve the curls and dye it because Cotswold usually has lovely curls. But uh, this one did not have the curl structure. So I'm just carding the whole thing because it's still a lovely fleece. It just doesn't have the curls. <laughs> Sadie, I thought I was the only one who did that. I hear somebody on the other side of my 10-foot hedge sneeze, and I'm yelling out, bless you. And it's like, people are like, uh, thank you. <laughs> oh, Bobo decided to come back in. Come here, Bobo. Come see hi. Uh, yep, he's all wet. He was outside. Because he's a crazy cat. 
And he likes to be held like this. I don't know why. He's just a weirdo. He likes to have his Superman arms. Say hi, Bobo. Hi. He does have, um, I don't know if you can see it, but he does have some scarring on his one eye from when he was a little kitten. He was rescued right off the street as a baby, baby kitten, and he had such bad eye infections that one of his eyes has got a scar on it. But trust me, he can see just fine. You see that piss face? He hates cuddling. <laughs> this is Bobo's let me go piss face. <laughs> there you go, buddy. See you later. <laughs> oh, no. BFL Gotland. Oh, nice. And then cross to a Wensleydale. Ooh, that's going to be gorgeous. He is grumpy. Always looks grumpy. He's not really. He just looks it. Okay, Bridget. Hope your meeting goes well. You have a great day too. See you later. That fleece, Kenna. Oh, that sounds like it could be amazing. Like I said, I'm going to have to clean this drum carter because I'm not being kind to it at all. But it was time for a complete teardown anyways. So I've had the thing for, oh my. It's got to be six or seven years now. So it's about time to pull the whole thing apart, give it a good proper cleaning. Yes, I will do a video of that. All right, Annika. Thanks for stopping in. It'll be up later. Uh oh, I really jammed it up with something there. Ooh, there we go. Popped it loose. <laughs> Just not being kind to my garter at all. I do not recommend that you abuse your equipment the way I'm abusing it right now. <laughs> Okay, Sadie, go take care of Hunter. I'm probably not going to be on much longer anyways because I'm soon going to have to pee. But thanks for joining us, Sadie. We'll see you later. Kisses. Oh, I think I will just finish carting up this fleece. And then I should go and do some editing. Oh, get that done. Stop procrastinating. It's raining out. It's a good day to do some inside tasks. So I should really do my editing. Hi, Marilyn. What are you painting? I bet it's not going to be as bold and bright as my house is. <laughs> you see my yellow hallway to go with my teal walls? I so wanted color. <laughs> the whole house. Wow. Time for a change, was it? See, my husband was of the opinion that the color for a house, there was only two colors, white or white. Like literally, our entire house was paneling where it wasn't white. So when I got this house and I had only to please myself, I did con him into some other colors, by the way, but they had to be very subtle colors. So when I got this house, I was like, nope, I am indulging in my need for color. So I have a peacock palette going on that I just love. The living room today, that sounds like a big job. While you're editing, just think of us who appreciate all you do and are excited for whatever you post. Oh, thanks, Kenna. I do... It's not that I really hate it. I just have to be in the right mood to do it, which is an all the time. But, but I have to say, um, I finally found the program that works for me, and it's getting much easier. So I'm not dreading it near as much as I used to. I'm much faster at it, so it's not as much of a chore. And the more I do work with this program, the easier it's going to get as I figure things out. So. Honestly, editing is getting much, much better. My dining room is red. The living room was brown, but I'm doing the living room in gray this time. Oh, that'll look nice with the red in the, di the dining room. That'll be nice. Oh, 
30 pounds of tomatoes, Kenna? Oh, what are you doing? Are you making tomato sauce or are you just canning them? Yeah, painting the kitchen red. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Funny enough, when I moved in, the kitchen was the only room I didn't paint, but that would be it was because it had been newly renovated and I didn't want to muck up the oak cabinets. So making them into a paste. Yeah. And they're so useful, right? It's like me carting this into a uh, Bats. It's not going to be its end form, but it's easier to store and it's ready to go when I need it. So it helps. My sister-in-law out on her commune does a lot of canning and they even have like an actual root cellar. It's a really old farmhouse. Beautiful. Like we're talking log made farmhouse and they just, they love their hippie lifestyle. So I'm very happy for them. She wants me to, uh, she wants to grow flax for me to process. And I'm just like, oh my God, have you looked at how much work flax is? But okay, I'm willing. <laughs> yeah, still fluffing. 100 pounds of tomatoes is here. Oh my goodness. I tried to grow tomatoes. I didn't get any. I got a few cucumbers, a bunch of peas, and I have... Two melons growing. Now, granted, I planted like five seeds of each. I just wanted to see what would happen because I'm so not a gardener. But now that I've had a little bit of success, I'm planning on a big garden next year. Well, not big, but bigger. And see if I can uh, grow some more because I have like a literal black thumb. I can kill just about anything. So, yeah. All right. One more bat. And then we'll log off for the day. What's everybody up to today? Eight pounds of cucumbers. That's a good return. Yeah, cucumbers seem to really like the heat, eh? Now, my brother, the hippie commune brother, I have two of them. I'm with you, Crystal. I can kill anything, including succulents. Um, yeah, my brother tells me that in order to get your cucumbers to grow... Um, you should pick the first couple that show up, um, because once it produces, um, cucumbers, it thinks it's already produced its seeds and then it'll stop producing cucumbers. So you have to convince it that it needs to make more seeds. So if you pick one or two, uh, it will encourage the plant to then make more cucumbers. Oh! There goes Bobo. <laughs> I don't know what happened outside, but he came running in really fast. Woke up Latte. Kicked a box around. Yeah, that's that's Bobo. He's a crazy cat. Oh, he came running in to use the bathroom. <laughs> My garden stuck this year. Oh, no. Potatoes got worms. Oh, no. Well, hey, at least you got peppers, right? Pick first and early, and then they go crazy. So he's right. Huh. Not that I didn't believe him. I mean, he is the farmer of the family now. But, you know, it's funny because um, he's actually a, a trained mental health counselor. So that's his day job. And then the rest of the time, he's farming. They have huge gardens and stuff. Mostly his wife handles the, the gardens. The wife and his three daughters. He says it's a good thing that I trained him early because now he's used to girls. <laughs> Tomatoes were hard this year. They had a hard time with water and the heat. A lot of end rot. See, all this stuff sounds so technical to me. <laughs> yeah. I just stick stuff in the ground, and if it grows, it grows, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. That's probably why I kill plants, because I don't know anything about them. 
I don't have any plants in my house either because they just die. There's just no point to it. Oh, that's my phone. Apparently I will need to, uh, it's my mother. I have everybody has their own text tone. Okay, that can wait for now. <clears throat> oh, Marilyn, that sucks. See, I tried that, Kenna. I put some seeds in paper towel until they sprouted, and then I planted the paper towel. They didn't grow. It's probably just me because I'm horrible with plants, but, you know, that's the way it goes. All right, this is the last of it for this cart. Oh, yes, I got it too thick. I'm really abusing my equipment. But Spike here can take it. He's tough. The hubby does the same. Starting seeds in the house. Start the onions in January. Wow. And see, that's the other thing. I don't know which plants should go in the fall and which ones should go in the spring. I just need to learn about gardening. All right. Let's get this off. Yes, Bobo, you did that. He's checking out the box in the middle of the hallway now. Like, how did this get here? Well, you did that when you flew into the house like a raging maniac. They do have a litter box outside. They just don't always use it. Onions take a long time from the seed. Huh. I did not know that. A three-car garage full of seedlings? Wow. That's a lot. I could see me with a three-car garage full of fleeces, though, so I guess I shouldn't talk. I mean, it's all what you love, right? I'm such a hoarder. I could totally hoard a three-car garage worth of fleeces. I've really got to get one of those knuckle-saving bat pickers because I'm just brutalizing my fingers. Luckily, I think I've built up calluses on the backs of all my fingers from beating on them so much. Oh, latte got up. I guess he followed Bobo. They're probably outside now. I just put their winter door on and it, uh, oh, no, Bobo's still in here. It clicks when they uh, go through it. Bless you, Bobo. He just had a sneezing fit. I don't know if it's a crazy setup. It sounds like fun. <laughs> you can be a laborer if she shares your uh, her master garden with you. Table set up in two rooms with lights. Wow, that's dedication. I tell you, I don't have that dedication. Come the spring, I'll throw some seeds in the ground and see if they grow. I might water them once in a while. <laughs> there we go. There's another bat. We'll throw it in the bin. Have a look at our progress. So we have all of this picked and carded, but I still have <sighs> all of this left to go. I think I may be down to half, maybe. Feels about like three or four pounds. And it was a six pound fleece to start. So I'm making progress. <laughs> yes, the big box of fluff is exciting for the soul. I'm just happy to be getting it done. And I've just been sitting and picking while I watch TV and it's getting done. 
that that's why I'm being so brutal on my character because I just want to get through this, get it all done up. So then it's ready for working. This is, I kind of consider this like pre-prep before it's ready to be turned into roving or recarded again to make smoother bats or whatever I decide to do with it. Oh my goodness, Bobo is completely nuts. <laughs> Anyways, I am going to go and get on with my day. Marilyn, I pick inside. That's why I have hardwood floors. So I can just sweep it up when I'm done because half my year is winter and I can't be outside doing it. But yes, it is nice to pick outside in the good weather. But anyways, thanks for joining me, guys. I will get some more videos edited, I promise, and I will get them uploaded. But it's been great sitting and chatting with you all. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you later.